Now I'm going to use Envirotex Light for this project, but there are other brands of the same stuff. Here's another one. This is called uh, Glaze Coat. I picked it up at my local uh, hardware store or lumberyard. If you want to find this, the best way to do it is just go to your local uh, lumberyard and ask them in the paint department for something that you can pour onto a tabletop to make it look like there's 50 coats of varnish. And they will take you in the paint department and in their varnishes they will have something like this. Open it up and make sure that you've got two parts, a part A and a part B, that you mix them together. And that's the right stuff. Uh, that's the stuff you need for this project. Whatever the brand name, it should work just fine. Let me see if I can find an easy way to explain how much liquid you're going to need for whatever project you're doing. Uh, the best way to describe it probably is in square inches. So what I'm going to do is we have a, a square inch of material, okay? Just consider this to be hardened resin after it's liquid. If we take one square inch, in other words, this is one inch by one inch by a quarter inch thick. And for this whole project, everything's just going to be a quarter inch thick when it comes to the water. The volume of that is around 0.14 ounces. Okay, it takes 0.14 ounces of material to pour in and fill that little square. That's really about the same amount as a floor tile on one of the molds. Now, I'm going to do a little test here. And the test to check to see if the color is right what it is is I've made a four inch by four inch square hole and I'm gonna fill it with a quarter inch thick of material and you can see I've kinda of glued a fish down in here to see what it's gonna look like so the question is how much material do I have to pour in here how much do I have to mix up so I don't waste any to make this go a quarter inch thick well this little area that I'm gonna do is four inches by four inches right so let's go ahead and and make a little graph that kinda of shows that so what I've got I've got four inches going this way and four inches by going this way. Well, four times four is 16. So I've got 16 square inches of material that I have to do. Well, one square is 0.4 ounces, but I've got 16 of these squares. So I'm going to take it times 0.14 ounces, and let's see how many ounces we have. If you do the math, that ends up being 2.14. 2.4 ounces of material that you have to mix up. So we're going to mix up 2.24 ounces of material and dye it and then see how that looks when we get done. Now 2.24 uh, ounces of mixed material that would mean that you need 1.12 ounces of part A and you're going to need 1.12 ounces of part B and then you're going to need the uh, the color that goes on top of it. And we'll still use this measurement in square inches to figure out how much we need for the big project. Now for this test what we need is 2.24 ounces of mixed material. So here I've got my reusable measuring cup and I'm going to nest a cup inside of that. And I need uh, 1.12 ounces of part A and 1.12 ounces of part B. And I'm just going to take kind of a close guess. Now when you pour this stuff, this is pretty thick. It pours like honey. So you want to be kind of careful when you pour it in there. And watch it because after you pour it, the level will raise up just a little bit because it starts spreading out towards the edges. So I'm going to go just over the one ounce mark when I pour in the part A here. So let's, uh, let's leave that just a bit. That's just, uh, just about right there. So from my angle when looking at it, it looks like that's about 1.1 ounces. And you know, a close guess is, is you know, probably close enough. So I'm going to take part B and I'm going to pour it to uh, uh, about finally up to 2.2 ounces. So I'm just going to pour the other half in here till it goes a little bit more above the two line here. Okay, a little bit more. There we go. There we go. So we have got 2.2 ounces, uh, close enough, of uh, material here that I'm going to mix up. Now to color this water, I am going to use ordinary food coloring that you could buy at any Walmart or any store anywhere. And the color I'm going to use is a very simple formula that works really well. We're going to use a drop of green, a drop of red, and a drop of blue for this amount. Now I didn't want my test any smaller than that because 
small drops are kind of hard to measure. In other words, if I had less resin than this, it's kind of hard to add a third of a drop to something. So this formula is real simple. For this amount of liquid to cover a 4x4 four four area, which is 2.2 uh, 4 ounces of material, I'm going to use one drop of green, one drop of red, and one drop of blue. And that's going to be my recipe for how much colorant I add. And these are handy because these suckers already have kind of the dropper built into them. So there's my drop of green. And let's get my drop of red in here. There's my drop of red. And then I'm also going to add a drop of blue. There we go. So it's kind of blue-green, but the red is going to uh, brown it up a little bit. So that's all the color I'm going to use in this for my test. So what you're going to do is you're going to take, a, uh, uh, take the handle of a paintbrush or whatever and stir it up. Now some people, uh, at least on the instructions, say that when you stir it up, you know, you're supposed to not, you know, um, uh, agitate it too much or work in air bubbles or, you know, for this, I'm not going to worry too much about it. This resin actually takes a very long time to cure, depending on how thick you do it. So there's going to be a lot of time for the air bubbles to come to the surface and work those air bubbles out. It's more important that you get a good mix. In other words, if this is not mixed properly, it's never going to cure completely. You're going to have ribbons or strips of uncured material in it. So be sure that you make this up really well. And you'll notice that this, this I've got a lot of, uh, quite a lot of air in this. But it's all going to come to the surface when, when, I get, uh, when I get done pouring it in here. Okay, now that this stuff is mixed up, for the test, what I'm going to do is pour it over. Now I want the fish in here to be glossy like he's wet. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour it over the fish directly. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pour this stuff in. And it's also important of a couple of things here. Number one, be sure that your table is level. If it's not level, this whole thing is probably going to go, you know, sideways a little. And the other thing is to make sure this is sealed up really well. It's kind of a good idea to put down a trash bag or uh, wax paper or something under here because I glued this down, but that doesn't mean that it's perfectly sealed. This stuff will run, and so it may run out onto your tabletop or onto your floor, and this stuff is a real mess to clean up. So you want to be sure that that's sealed really well. Uh, I glued it pretty well, and I already did one test, so I note that this thing is cured pretty well. Let's see how we did as far as uh, amount of volume for what we calculated here. You know, I think we're pretty close. It looks like, you know, maybe I could have went uh, a little more liquid, but I don't know that I got exactly 2.24 uh, ounces uh, when I mix this up. But anyway, that's what we've got. Okay. <clears throat> now, if you take a look at this, you're going to see it looks like a layer of foam on the top. These are all the bubbles that worked into it when we were mixing this stuff up. And don't worry about it, even though it looks all foamy and looks kind of bad right now, it will clear up, because we're only going a quarter inch thick. And this is probably going to take about eight to ten hours to set up. Okay, after about a half hour, you notice that a lot of that foam is cleared up, but there's still quite a few bubbles. If they bother you, what you can do is just take the handle of a paintbrush and you can just sort of work this around. You, you can kind of see if you, if you run this paintbrush through it, they'll tend to want to cling around the, the fish and around the edges. So just take a paintbrush handle and run it through and then go along the outside edge and you can run it along the outside edge and you'll notice those bubbles will start to pop. And if you see more bubbles later on that you want to get rid of, you can just sort of run this through. This is going to take, you know, like I said, about eight hours to set up. So you've got plenty of time. Okay, this is about four hours later. Uh, you notice that, that most of the bubbles have all pretty much popped. And you can pretty much see the fish and you can kind of see the bottom in here. This is still a bit tacky. I mean, so if I took and I uh, moved my, uh, I could take a paintbrush. And here's what I mean about trying to mess up and try to make waves. This is still kind of soft enough where it looks like I can ripple this water up, okay? Where you can kind of kind of drag the uh, the uh, uh, you know paintbrush handle through it to try to make waves and all this. But no matter how much you mess this up, this is still going to probably settle down to be a glass smooth surface when we get done. 
So I'm just kind of doing this for an experiment, since this is a test anyway, about four hours later. You know, after I uh, kind of dug it all up with a stick, it's flattened down to pretty much being smooth again, and it will continue to do that. You'll see a few specks in there, but that's because I was messing with ground cover, and I, it kind of flew everywhere. So you got to be careful that when you do this to keep your, you know, your dirt and your grass and ground foam and stuff like that away from it.